Hello everybody, this is Freddy from Turn Vertical. In today's video, I want to go over outdated Facebook tips which you should definitely not be following anymore in 2023. I still have these, you know, being thrown around from time to time, so I thought I'd go over each one of these and um, just figure out which one of these are essentially bad. Um, so I'd say let's get right into it. First thing is running tons of audiences. You know, in 2023, the only audience you should really be running is broad. And if you're asking yourself why, I have a separate video about that where you go really in depth into the topic. But essentially, you know, if you're using interest targeting, you're essentially paying your broad CPMs plus a little tax on it. So essentially paying more to each of those people. Audiences are kind of not updated often and not everybody within your audience is in a specific, you know, targeting audience. For example, if you, tar if you want to reach cat owners and you target cat owners, not everybody who owns a cat is within the cat audience. On top of it comes that also people who may hate cats are you know, in that particular audience. So that's why I don't recommend really using tons of audience anymore in 2023. You can have you know, some interest sticks are fine. I use 99% I mean, broad, but um, yeah, if you're still using interest stacks, that's fine, but just don't use too many different audiences um, in your scaling campaigns. Then number two are like small retargeting windows. So whenever I see accounts where they reach out to with like 14 day add to cart, I tell them to broaden up that retargeting window. You know, whether I should use retargeting or not also is up for discussion. I have a separate video about that as well. But um, you know, in short, if you're using retargeting, try to have broad retargeting windows. The Facebook algorithm has gotten smarter. It knows which people to retarget. And um, on top of it comes that small retargeting audiences are usually because Facebook doesn't track every you know, person, for example, added to cart anymore because of the iOS 14.5 update, these retargeting audiences are way smaller than they used to be. And therefore, you know, very quickly you run into like frequency issues. And these types of audiences only really make sense if you're spending lots of lots of lots of budget um, on Facebook. Then, oops, number three is still using ABO campaigns in 2023. You know, the only campaign type you should probably be running in 2023 is our CBO campaigns, right? Why is that, you know, Facebook knows what to optimize for. You know, if you, if you tell them you want to get purchases, they get you, you know, people who want to buy essentially. So that is the same for, you know, CBO campaigns. Facebook knows when to display which ad set to, you know, a person. So if you're running, for example, two, you know, ad sets within a scaling campaign, that might be like 1% lookalike and broad, Facebook knows when to show that broad and when to show that 1% lookalike. So if you are using ABO and you manually adjust the budgets, so you're just basically preventing the algorithm from working correctly because you think you're smarter than the algorithm, which you are in fact not. And um, you will eventually, or over time, you will definitely you know, get a lower CPA compared to running CBO campaigns. So the only thing where this is probably up for discussion is in testing campaigns, where do you want to like test specific elements and you want to give them a certain amount of budget to, you know, say whether they're good or not. Um, so yeah, that's really all. The only thing that's up for discussion in 99% of cases, or not in 99% of cases, but in most cases, I use the CBO also for testing, but in some accounts I still use ABO for testing. Um, I have a separate video about that, which I will link um, somewhere around here. And then number four is still using engaged choppers in 2023. That kind of, go, go, kind of goes you know, hand in hand you know, with the running tons of audiences. But I want to explain to you why engaged choppers in particular is a really bad audience. Number one, it's used by tons of people. So tons of people think by running or by using engaged choppers as an audience, they're going to you know, reach people who are basically online shoppers. Right? That's the goal. People who shop online, people who buy from shops. And because so many people are using it, you're paying a way higher CPM compared to, you know, for example, broad when you don't use that particular interest. Second of all is that, yeah, again, kind of like number one, that audience is first of all not updated regularly. And second of all, it does not mean that somebody is an engaged shopper just because they're in that particular audience, right? That was probably a tactic you just used like in 2017, 2018, where dropshipping was like on its high or on its peak. But in today's world, probably using engaged shoppers has like Get rid of it. You will get lower CPMs, better results, you know, less probably hate comments and stuff like that, um, or like scam comments, stuff like that. Um, so I would highly advise you to stop using engaged choppers in particular as an audience altogether. Like get rid of it. 
And then number five is basically running too many campaigns. I still see, you know, the middle of funnel campaign, bottom of funnel campaign, oh, scaling campaign one, testing campaign one, and then you know, like testing campaign two for, I don't know, ABO, CBO, and then, you know, you have a different, different scaling campaign on top of that. It's way too much. You know, stick to like one testing and one scaling campaign per SKU. So I have accounts running that are spending like, you know, 5K per day, even more than that. And they are running on two campaigns, like one scaling campaign and then one testing campaign. There's no retargeting in, in most of these, um, most of the accounts that I'm running. Um, and, you know, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. That's the formula that you want to go with. There's no need to run like a specific middle of funnel campaign and a bottom of funnel. It all just complicates what Facebook wants you to do. And like the best practice is combine the budget, combine your budget in as few pace places as possible. And that means, you know, running as few campaigns as possible. And um, obviously this is a different discussion if you're running like lots of SKUs and you have like lots of hero products, but that's like a rare instance in 99% of D2C cases, or maybe let's say 90% of D2C cases, you are better off with like a two campaign setup than you are with like a five or six campaign setup. Um, I can guarantee you that. So yeah, those were the you know top outdated Facebook tips which I could find in 2023. I hope you got some value out of this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon in the next video. Bye.